bags down, spikes on. Welcome to the track. My name is Colin Waitsman. I'm going to be your host for this episode of Track World News. And this is going to be our very first weekly, yeah, weekly recap. We're going to be taking a look at some of the meets from this previous week that happened Friday, Saturday. Talk about some highlights, some things we're going to be looking forward to within the next few weeks, months, years, based off of some of these performances. And we are still going to be having our regular episode where we talk about the biggest news stories. Uh, that's going to be coming out tomorrow, actually. Uh, so you, if you're looking for some of those interesting topics, my opinions on them, that's going to be coming out tomorrow. Uh, we're just adding this extra episode as a little bonus. So I uh, hope you enjoy. First, I uh, want to stick with uh, my favorite event that's going to be pole vault. Uh, we're we're going to look at uh, Casey Lightfoot, uh, who is of Baylor. He's a junior. He just jumped 594, which is the new NCAA record. Uh, he, that's 19 feet 5 and 3 quarters. He did that at Texas Tech. And it's actually just about one year ago from last year in February, uh, Nielsen, Chris Nielsen, uh, jumped 593 and then the year before in February I think February 18th 2019 uh, Mondo Duplantis jumped 592 so it's just been a one centimeter increment over every single year so far they just it just seems like the vaulters are getting better and better and it was a really good jump he had some really nice clearance on it and he mentioned yeah I mean he put the bar at six meters it didn't work he said that you should be seeing six meters sooner rather than later. I mean, what athlete wouldn't say that? So, I mean, it shows that he has confidence, and I think he can do it. I mean, he has he's improved a lot. I mean, just taking a look at his PRs, his PR previously was 583, and he now just cleared 594, which is the new NCAA record. I mean, that's a huge jump, especially when you're jumping that high. Like, that's a, that's a typical PR difference that you would see – you know, for, for people that are jumping in the, the 15s, maybe even the 16s or the 14s, like like this high school and, and college level vaulters are, or be, more beginner level vaulters, closer to what I was jumping, uh, rather than people that are now leading the NCAA and also leading the world. He has, currently has the world lead. Um, so now we have like around 10 vaulters that are currently competing that could be over that six meter mark. Uh, there's a lot of vaulters that are, are competing at a very, very high level right now, and it's going to be interesting to see how they do moving forward. I'm really excited for it, um, but yeah. So next person that we're going to go over also with the vault, uh, Renault Lavillani. He jumped 592. He had the world lead for all of 30 minutes, and then Casey Lightfoot had jumped. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, Casey Lightfoot, congratulations on being ESPN Top 10. I think he was the 8th. Um, the eighth play in the top 10 today. And he was also on like the, the clearance of the day also on ESPN. So great to see the sport uh, getting some recognition, especially moving into the meets that are going to be coming up uh, next week. So he jumped 592. It was the world lead for about 30 minutes. And it's also the second longest time in between an athlete's first clearance of 590 and their last clearance of 590. So he's jumped 590 over the course of 11 years. I think, uh, what's his name? Bubka did it over the course of 13 years where he jumped 590 one year and then 13 years later, he also jumped it. So he's had a pretty uh, consistent career. Um, we, you know, there's also some other big news, him and Puma, going to be talking about that in the next episode so you can catch my take on that. Uh, so that was another jump. And then the biggest performance of the week, and to me it's really no... There, there, it's no, not even close, but the, the biggest performance, I'm going to give it to, I'm going to butcher your name, I'm so sorry, but uh, Hughes Fabrique Zango of Burkini Faso, he cleared an indoor triple jump world record of 18.07 meters, shattered the world record, um, actually previously held by his coach uh, in 2011, who jumped 1792. Uh, that's 59 feet 3 inches for the new world record. And it's a, it's a, it was a huge jump. It, it was actually super exciting because he did it on his very last attempt of the day. He had a jump that looked like it could have been 1770, which would have been just a little bit short of his PR, which is 1774. So he had a really, really great performance. Uh, he start, he struggled in the beginning and really started heating it up. And if you, you take a look at it, it's all over YouTube, Facebook and Twitter, all that stuff. He's doing really well. Um, 
He was uh, the former world bronze medalist in 2019. Um, and now this is really making that, that triple jump, um, triple jump increasingly more interesting going into the Olympics this year. Now we have Christian Taylor, Will Clay, and obviously Zango. They were already like the three best triple jumpers, but this is just taking it that extra level, um, of, of competition. And so we'll see if anyone can actually, uh, take out the regular world record, which is 1829, um, so let's see if that, that's going down. Um, very, very impressive jump. I want, it's going to be interesting to see who's going to be the first person to jump over 60 feet because that 1829 is 60 feet exactly. So it will be, will be really cool. Um, extremely, extremely great performance. And I'm looking forward to seeing how he does the rest of this year, um, indoors and outdoors. Now turning off to the women's side, um, one of the best performances that we saw on the women's side this, this week was uh, Aething Moo. Sorry if I, I butchered your last name. She's a, a freshman of Texas A&M. She ran 201.07 in the 800, which is flying fast. Of course, it's the NCAA lead as well as the world lead currently. And it was just 0.04 seconds off the U20 world record. Uh, so she is flying. She's having a fantastic performance. Um, and she's dominating as of right now. I mean, the next fastest person in the NCAA is four seconds slower. So she is just killing the competition. She's running extremely fast and she's doing it at a very young age. So I'm excited to see where she's going to go. I definitely see her clearing that, that two minute mark sometime this year in indoors. And of course, she'll probably do it sometime outdoors as well. She's just killing it and, and doing extraordinarily well. So it's it's something to, to look forward to and something that I think is gonna be, be pretty exciting. Next, uh, we have uh, another uh, athlete coming from uh, Texas A&M. Uh, it's Tyra Giddens of Texas A&M. She jumped 6.62 meters in the long jump, uh, which is 21, point, 21 feet. 6.8 inches. She broke the national record in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, extraordinarily great jump. Texas A&M is going to be a, a team to really look for uh, this this indoor uh, championship. I'm definitely going to get, come out later with my top 10 teams and like power rankings, I guess you could say, of who I think can can take on the, the national championship. But Texas A&M is, is doing really well. Uh, they have these two great jumpers. Um, and I believe that uh, the 662 is also the, an NCAA lead. So a lot of really great competitions. I mean, there, there's a ton of, there's a ton of great, uh, athletes this week and it being one of the first major meets where a lot of school or major weeks where a lot of schools are competing. It also meant that there were a lot of people that had NCAA leads. So uh, I think almost every uh, competition this week had an NCAA lead. If you if you Google track and field news, uh, you'll and then you'll see like the first like ten results saying, "Oh, this athlete ran an NCAA lead. This athlete ran an NCAA lead." Well, of course, because not a lot of people have competed, so everyone's gonna have a lead <laughs> pretty much. If you if you won your meet this week, you probably had an NCAA lead. So it's those are gonna slow down, but overall, still very 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 good competitions so far. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing how these athletes do moving forward and, um, and all that stuff. So uh, thanks for listening to this episode of Track World News. Just a, a, a meet we recap because don't want to, there's some of these things that I would probably miss if I were to try to do it all in one episode, it would just take too long. So I wanted to split it up, get it, give it its own section. Uh, if you like these meet recaps, let me know. Uh, I'll make sure to keep doing them moving forward. Um, if not, then we'll, we'll try to just take the top three or top two performances and, and squeeze them into the main episode. So hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to have some more content, take a look at our Instagram page, Track World News. Uh, also, make sure to give this show a like, favorite, subscribe, and share this episode with a friend. really helps us grow and, and know that you're enjoying everything. So my name is Colin Waitsman. Hope you had a good one, and peace.